Welcome to Becoming Limitless. This is the podcast for entrepreneurs who want to optimize their brain and their body with biohacking. I'm going to teach you how to eliminate brain fog and upgrade your health so you can have more productivity, energy, and growth in your business. I'm your host, Tanessa Shears. Let's jump in. Welcome back to the Becoming Limitless podcast. Here we are, part four of our four-part breakthrough series that is designed for you to understand how to get unstuck no matter where you are in your journey because no matter what type of goal you're gonna go after, you're gonna encounter different roadblocks and solutions along the way. So in this four-part series, I'm highlighting the four different parts of every journey towards your goal. The first part being the very beginning, maybe you're just getting started, What happens just after you're started? The previous episode was all about just before reaching your goal. And this one is all about the roadblocks you're gonna encounter and how to succeed just after you have reached your goal. Now this is this is an interesting one because you would think like, well, why do you need to keep working on it? You've achieved your goal, but there are actually plenty of things that are gonna come up that are gonna throw you off your path and maybe even undo some of the great things you have achieved. This four part series is all just designed to help you always continue moving forward, know what to work on next and to keep going. And so you can pair these four episodes with wherever you are in your journey. You might find that with one goal, you're in the, uh, just after attaining the goal in one, another goal, maybe you're just starting out. So it's totally normal to be at different points in this, in this like framework with different goals. And so what I want you to do while you're listening to these is just be listening like, ah, yeah, that sounds like me. That's totally what I'm struggling with. Now I know exactly what to work on. Cause this podcast, you know, this podcast is like jam packed with Uh, biohacks and strategies and tips and things you can do to your routines and like literally everything that gives you the how. But I mean, the how is only so good until you get stuck. And if you can't see what you're stuck on, well, heck, that is where you're going to run into some trouble. So I was hoping that by giving you the four parts of this framework and the breakthrough series that you can keep the momentum going. And of course, if you're, if you know you're in this stage and you still need that additional help, you're always welcome to reach out to me or apply for the Becoming Limitless program. There's links in the description because I, I, this is what I do. I help you implement these things and make sure that you are moving through these roadblocks and that you don't get stuck. But let's jump into this episode and talk all about the roadblocks that are going to come up right after you have achieved your goal. So the first roadblock that is going to come up is finding this sense of maintenance over progress, right? So how do you maintain this new newfound health. Like how do you maintain what you've achieved and not regress? Like learning how to maintenance. And you know, if you listen to the last episode, I riffed a little bit on why I hate the term maintenance mode. Um, when I'm speaking of maintenance here, it's how do you continue to be consistent at and keep them as part of a routine, like all of these new habits that you've developed, like how do you maintain what you have achieved? Not how do I go into maintenance mode, which our brains like to think is something entirely separate from just maintaining things, right? So we're looking like, okay, well, what do I got to do? Like I'm struggling here. Like I don't know how to hold it all in. Like another, another thing you might actually struggle with, uh, just after you've reached your goal is like, what's next? Um, And I know I can relate to this in my health and actually also in my business. Whenever you hit, hit one of your milestones, there's kind of like this, you know, the momentary, I did it. And then there's like this deflation and this kind of like, what's next? And for me, I just have found with my type, If I'm not pursuing something, a project I'm working on with my business, a goal I'm working towards with my health, I, for me, get very uninspired and I get unmotivated. I don't like this sense of coasting and just kind of resting on my laurels of thinking like, hey, I'm healthy now. I don't have to work at it anymore. And so I always like to be having that next thing I'm working on. And this is, I think, one of the roadblocks is we don't have new goals. It's like you've achieved what you wanted to achieve and now there's nothing inspiring you about your health. And so you become uninterested and that becomes, you know, danger territory for, you know, losing the result that you just gained, right? So what's next for you? That is definitely a roadblock. Another roadblock that you might come up to is balance. So now that, now that you're here, 
Now that you have all this great sleep, now that you're eating the way you want to be eating, now that you're moving the way you want to be moving, you feel the way you want to feel, like how do I keep all this going and ensure my business doesn't suffer, right? Because naturally, like with business, you're going to go through busy seasons. Maybe maybe you're a CFO and you have a busy season around tax time, or maybe you, know, you go through two big launches per year. I've got a client that has two massive launches per year, and you go through these different seasons, right? Now, the question is if you have achieved your result in a rather quiet time of the year, how do you then maintain that result when it gets busy again? So looking at how how can I keep my health while I'm still running my business, and but then also keep it in a way that I don't have to neglect my business. So finding that balance can sometimes be a huge roadblock. And then of course, avoiding relapse, right? It's totally natural to recognize that once you're there, I mean, old habits or temptations may start to creep back in and it's never what we intend. Sometimes it just happens because, you know, maybe we went on vacation and it threw us out of our routine and it took a little while to get back into the routine, right? So watching for these places where relapse might happen because you had to do something to change your routine. Maybe you traveled for work, you went on a vacation, you went through a launch, and it's just easier to do the old things. But I really want you to start watching for these Um, opportunities for you to let old habits creep back in. So the four big roadblocks after you've achieved your goal is learning how to maintain your result, is making sure you're always looking forward at the next thing so you continue to feel inspired and that there's growth ahead of you, balancing your business with your health, and of course, avoiding relapse and slipping back. So, I mean, the problem with a lot of these roadblocks is that void, that's what I spoke to, that void that kind of comes after achieving the goal and not feeling like you have a direction or a purpose anymore, right? And that is never a good feeling, especially for us. We run businesses because we like achievement, we like growth, we like chasing things, right? And this applies to your health too. If you're feeling unmotivated, maybe it is you need something to direct your energy towards. So here are signs that you are in that point just after reaching your goal. And like I said, maybe you're resting on your laurels. You're just like, I'm healthy now. Like I, I've told this story before, but I, when I used to run my full-time personal training business, I had a client and she said to me, she goes, sometimes I'm at the gym and I look around and there's all these fit and healthy people there. And I always think to myself, like, what are you still doing here? Aren't you done? And it made me just at that moment, I was like, oh my gosh, this is that whole idea of maintenance mode. Like there is no end goal. Like it is this lifelong journey that we have signed up for. It's like you do this to become a healthy person, not to achieve a goal and then go back to who you were, right? And so I always think that like, just because we're healthy doesn't mean we stop because that's how you go unhealthy, right? Um, Another sign that this might be where you are is you've lost the structure or the routine that got you there, right? Um, Maybe you are not uh, going to bed at the time that you know makes you feel the best and it's half an hour later, uh, a couple of nights a week, and you just notice that little edge that's been taken off of your focus and you're not quite feeling the same, right? You're losing the routine and the structure that got you there. Maybe you had an amazing night routine going and you had, you were stretching, you made time for, you know, to do your skin treatments and you felt totally wound down and maybe a plugged in brain FM and you just felt so good. And finally you weren't waking up in the middle of the night anymore and you were getting good sleep. And, and all of a sudden you're like, where did my night routine go? And you're like, oh, I should get this back together. So watch for things like that happening. Um, Another sign that this might be where you are is you're no longer continually learning. Now, this is something that very much in many areas of my health, I feel like I'm in this just after attaining the health goal, right? And where I notice and is a red flag for me is when I stop learning. So I'll go through phases where I will learn all about exercise, different types, uh, how to program it differently, how to um, cycle with my my energy, what type of workouts I do. And then I'll get really interested in food and blood sugar and uh, continuous glucose monitors. And I'll get really interested in that. And then I'll get really interested in sleep and biohacking and then saunas and cold. Like I'm always learning something. And I, I for me, when I notice that I've stopped reading new books on health or nutrition or have stopped watching YouTube videos or intaking uh, to some degree that I notice I get a little lax with things. And it's so interesting. Like whenever I am reading books on 
Food, my food is on point. When I'm watching a lot of exercise uh, programming videos or motivation videos, my exercise is on point. And so if you notice that you have stopped engaging in the content that inspired you and got you to try new things, honestly, maybe it's this podcast. Maybe this podcast for you is your continuous learning. But maybe if you notice that you've stopped listening a lot lately, maybe that is a cue that you might be in this stage. Um, the last one is you, maybe you have that sense of achievement, right? Like, yeah, I just did it. But that feeling kind of what we talked about of what next, right? You occasionally laughs into your old routines, but you kind of have this brain mindset that like, nah, it's all right. Nothing's going to happen to me. I'm kind of invincible. I can do all these things. And yes, that might be a short term reality, but if we are not conscious of how we are taking care of our brain and our health and our sleep, and the way we eat, and how we recover, and our energy, we will lose it. So these are all signs that you might be in this stage right now. Hey, do you want to be in the know? Or do you want exclusive behind the scenes content? Follow me over on Instagram at Tanessa Shears. You'll see the day to day of how I optimize my health and business, as well as new biohacks and tips that you won't hear on the podcast. Don't forget to reach out and say hi in the DMs. I promise I don't bite. And I love hearing from my community here on the podcast. Search my name, Tanessa Shears, and hit follow, or just click the link in the description and let's get connected. So now if you notice that you are in this stage and the natural next step is like, okay, what are the solutions? If I, if I am trying to figure out maintenance and new goals and balance and all of that, like how do I succeed when I'm in this stage? And so here's, here's what I might offer as the solutions to keep you moving in the right direction. And number one is lifelong learning. And I think that is honestly where the passion for health comes from me. It's just this, this innate drive to continue improving, right? This lifelong learning learning and understanding that wellness isn't just a, a destination that you get to. It's the journey, right? What are you learning and how can you get that 1% better all of the time? And not from a place of needing to improve or that you're not enough, but of finding out what's possible. I mean, that's what this podcast is about, right? Becoming limitless. It's learning what am I capable of? What is what what am, what is possible for my energy and my business and how I feel in my life and my dreams and my goals? Like what is possible? And it's all about this journey. So digging in, maybe finding a new favorite author, a, a favorite podcast, joining a program, something that allows you to continue to expand your, your excitement for health. All right. And that kind of leads nicely into thing number two, set new, bigger goals, aim for a greater height. How can you challenge yourself differently? Maybe it looks looks like taking on some type of challenge. Like I always love challenges as a way of reinvigorating myself. For for example, like in addition to the healthy eating that I regularly do, I like to throw a 30 day, no sugar, no flour challenge in there. And I've done, if you go back uh, a couple episodes, I did a whole episode on how I do the no sugar, no flour challenge. But the reason I like that, I not only do that as kind of like a health boost and a blood sugar reset, but it sharpens the saw with my discipline. And that kind of, that saying of sharpening the saw is like, this is an exercise in helping me create better discipline for myself, right? So maybe a fun challenge is just what you need. Maybe it's a a step per day challenge that you wanna try to hit for the next month to see what's possible, you know, or just for fun. Or maybe you wanna try, you know, adding more vegetables to your meals. Or maybe you wanted to try to get your sleep score up into the high 90s, you know what I mean? Find a challenge for yourself, set a new goal, have fun, you know, detach from the outcome and use it as a learning experience. The third way to succeed if you are in this stage is what I call integration. So learning how to integrate wellness and business so one complements the other. This is um, doing things like, for example, if you've ever heard of the practice yoga nidra or NSDR, non-sleep deep rest, these are both practices that can be done in the middle of your workday. They take 10 to 20 minutes and they are so good for a full brain and body reset. So if you find you're sluggish or you're fading away in the afternoon or your brain isn't what it was in the morning, which is totally normal by the way, you do get ebbs and flows and focus throughout the day. This is a great practice that you can put into your business that not only supports your health and your wellness, but it improves your productivity and your focus. So finding habits like this to be able to integrate them and make so they complement each other instead of looking at them as two things that are competing for your time. What if what you do with your health enhances the time you spend in your business, right? Like really understanding how you can further integrate them will help you succeed in this stage. And lastly, 
engaging in regular check-ins, either with a group of friends you have or an accountability uh, buddy or a, a program you're in or a wellness expert, reinforcing that link between optimal health and sustained business success are going to be so important, right? Having people around you, we talked about this in the previous episode, having people around you that value health and well-being and presence and meaningful time with family as much as business will help to sink that into your lifestyle, right? So making sure that you're staying plugged into those communities that are constantly setting goals, holding you accountable, and not letting you relapse into old habits. So this is kind of summing up what to do just after you attained your goals. And remember, if you set a new goal, you might go all the way back to stage one in the breakthrough series, which was right when you're starting your journey. But the great thing is you have these episodes to know what's going to be coming up for you and where there is room for improvement and the skills that you need to learn. So like I said, roadblocks in here, maintenance, new goals, balance, all of these things are going to be coming up that you have to learn. And of course, the solutions being lifelong learning, learning, setting new goals, integrating it with your health, and of course, engaging in a community or with someone who is on the same path as you. So this four-part breakthrough series, I hope has been exceptionally helpful, and it provides a wonderful complement to all the tools and strategies you have been learning about on the podcast and provides a way for you to self-coach yourself and continue moving forward in this process. So I hope you have have a beautiful week and you are continuously moving towards your goals. I have a great week. I'll talk to you next time. Bye. Learn something new in this episode or feel inspired to take action. I'd love for you to share it with a friend and leave a review. Your review will help one more entrepreneur feel healthier, more energized and focused. If you feel good about helping a friend or a fellow business owner you've never even met, You are my kind of people. I'm excited to help you become limitless in the coming episodes.